Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Ray Tampa Podcast. Our podcast offers bold commentary on various subject matters with a laser-like focus on the truth. My name is Ray Tampa, and I'm the host of the Ray Tampa Podcast. We have in our studio Mr. Russell Cato, a retired educator with more than 40 plus years of experience here in Pinellas County Schools, and Mr. Jamie Wilson III, a healthcare provider with more than 25 years of experience as a physical therapist. My co-host, my dynamic co-host, following the city council's five to three vote of approval for the Ray Stadium deal, the Catalyst Magazine's reporter, Mark Parker, wrote, Council Member uh, Copley Gertis said, quote, it took 17 years to have the right people in the right seats, end of quote. He then emphasized, but damn, if we don't have them now, End of quote. This statement by Copley Gertis has plenty of significance in terms of just how much the interest of the residents was in jeopardy with his presence on the council. There was very little chance, very little chance that the concerns of residents about the Ray Stadium deal would get any degree of a fair hearing from him. There was almost zero chance of the residents getting any degree of impartiality from him as required by state law. From the very first moment the stadium plan was announced, it appeared Copley Curtis was an enthusiastic supporter. This was at the point that a lot of important and highly questionable facts had not yet surfaced. His publicly announced support never wavered one bit from beginning to end, not one bit. <laughs> Many people have voiced opinions that Copley Gertis should have recused himself from voting on this plan due to perceived conflicts of interest. His uncle, Rob Gertis, was the city's chief architect for the stadium plan. It appeared that there was nothing opponents could say to get Copley to modify his support. Besides, Copley's dad, Charlie Gertis, a former city council member, is also the attorney representing a key component, a key component of the plan. He is the attorney representing the interests of the Woodson Museum. Wow. How can Rob Gertis represent the museum's interests while knowing that his brother was the chief negotiator for the city's interests and his son would be casting a vote on the matter? I thought lawyers had a legal obligation mm -hmm. to avoid conflicts of interest. Government officials, in particular, should always try to pro, uh, prioritize the avoidance of conflicts of interest scenarios, whether perceived or real. A very brief, a very brief bit of research produced 
this definition, this definition of, quote, what is a conflict of interest, end of quote. <clears throat> the answer to that question says, quote, a conflict of interest occurs when an individual's personal interests, family, friendships, financial, or social factors could compromise his or her judgment, decisions, or actions in the workplace. Governments take conflicts of interest so seriously in the workplace that they're regulated. They're regulated. The aforementioned statement is per the University of Central Florida's University Compliance and Ethics Center. Another question that was Googled asked, quote, how does the state of Florida define conflict of interest, end of quote. How does the state of Florida define conflict of interest? The answer is as follows. Florida law defines a conflict of interest as a situation where a private interest could lead to a disregard of a public duty or interest. Public officials should remain independent and impartial. The St. Petersburg residents shouldn't have to worry about honesty, trust, and transparency in our government officials. Gertis, Gertis, and Gertis seem to be the epitome of conflicts of interest. Two, there doesn't seem to be a care in the world about it. Yes, Copley, yes, it does appear that you had all the right people in the right seats, much to the detriment of the residents' best interests. Thank you. Okay, my dynamic co-hosts are ready to engage in a very healthy discussion about Copley Gertis and the possible conflicts of interest. Jamie, what you have? Well, Copley and the other uh, city council members, they knew that Copley's dad was representing the entity. They, representing what, Jay? The, you know, the, the entity, um, the Witsum Museum. Okay. They should have like promptly had a discussion. I mean, that should have been brought because each member, they have a, a duty to, if there's any question of um, conflict of interest or um, any alleged nepotism, mm -hmm. they have a duty to bring that forward. And right. um, we don't know that they didn't do that, but it doesn't seem like it was much energy put into it. Right. So that's where I am on that. Okay, good. For us, what you have? Well, one of the things I'm concerned about as a citizen, in the resident of St. Petersburg, I go back and look at when we put people in office, Jamie, we look for their honesty, we look for their trust, and we look for transparency. And my thing, are any of these things being met, right? I don't know. That's what I'm looking at. And when I go back and, and read this article again, he told me the, the conflict of interest. You, when you start defining these things and these things of being the rule of law, sometimes I just think that it doesn't matter. I just think it is the person who's in the position to determine the definition of the, the word, Jamie. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a fact if you look at the conflict of interest. You know what the conflict of interest is. People know what it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, and that's, that, that's easy to understand. But People override facts now. You know, yes. the rule of law is just broken. I, it, it just don't work anymore, Ray. An apple is an apple, but a people can take an apple is an orange. Hey, Russ, yeah. that's great. That's a good analogy. That's great. 
And when we talk yeah. about conflicts of interest, whether we're talking here in St. Pete, yeah. which is our focus, mm -hmm. or on the state level, yeah. or on the federal level, it's uh, appearing that people are ignoring yeah. conflict concerns. Yeah, truly. Truly. And it's the law that they should. Truly. It, they should. You know, yeah. it's very, very admirable just how close the Gertis family members are sure. to each other. Very close-knit family. Sure. They have strong family values. They do lots of family things together. They strongly support each other. It's in our DNA, right. as said by Copley Gertis. It's in our DNA. Well, Copley, with that being in your DNA and you know how strong you all are, can't you see where there's a direct conflict of yes, interest? Yes. If your uncle presents a plan to you as a city council member mm -hmm. that in the public's interest, you should recuse yourself. Exactly. Right. You exactly. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Exactly. And um, Copley and his uncle, Rob Gertis, they're so close that an article written by Colleen Wright, Tampa Bay Times reporter, indicated that they call each other brother. They're about 11 years apart. And they're so close, uncle and nephew, but they call each other brother. So if your brother is presenting a plan before you as a council member, can we expect any degree of impartiality? Truly. No, absolutely no. not. So he should have recused himself. Exactly. What'd you say, Jay? Well, I'm just hoping that this is challenged at some point. Um, it's pretty obvious. Like, dude, I'm sure these are intelligent guys. They're you know, yes. they, they, they know the rules, they know the law. One of them's a, an attorney. Well, I mean, they should know what's going on. Sure. This this is it's it's very obvious. Very obvious. Um and and I'm back to the other council members. Why didn't uh, what what is this thing? It's like people are afraid to speak up. What's going on? This this sounds like a <laughs> I don't know. Well, Jay, when you speak about the other council members. <laughs> They, for the most part, wanted Copley's yes vote mm -hmm. on this stadium deal. Uh -huh. Definitely, they wanted to ensure that this stadium deal passed. So, so they, they wouldn't didn't contest. Want to they wouldn't contest. Suggest mm -hmm. that Copley recuse himself. See, the whole stadium thing is is it's messy anyway. Yes, it's it's very messy in the first place. So I'm not surprised at stuff like this coming out. Um, conflicts of interest, all of it. And don't say it was for the residents of St. Pete because it wasn't. It never was. No. If you go back and look at when baseball came in and the highway came in, and at that time, Ray, that was, those, those were your largest development that was taking place in this area. But now, and you, you, you put it in your writing. This race development is the largest development that has taken place in St. Pete and will be for many, many years, mm -hmm. right? Th th this is a tremendous development here. Now, the, the question is, fairly, who is going to get the advantage here and who is going to get the disadvantage? <laughs> you see? And as I look at this, and I go back to what Jamie said, and as you read, and and you don't want to put this in, but this, this is what you do to us. Mm -hmm. When we begin to read things like this, we step back and say, man, this is nepotism. Mm -hmm. That is not good, Ray. No, it's not good. That is not good. I don't care who it is, my family, your family, your family. Mm -hmm. When you start employing nepotism into making decisions for people who are on the outside trying to say, I put you there because I trust in you. I believe that it was transparency. And you're not doing this. Something is wrong. And we can sit here and offer our opinions yes. all day long. Yes. 
we can bring forth factual information yes. to support yes. our opinions. Yes. But until someone files a complaint mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. with the Florida Commission on Ethics, got to file a complaint, nothing happens. Truly. Nothing happens. Oh, that's in motion. Now, once a complaint is filed and the commission decides to investigate it right. and eventually hold a hearing, nothing happens until a conviction occurs. If that person... <laughs> Let's say Copley, if he's convicted of violating the code of ethics, there's a wide range of penalties right. that he can be offered. Penalties from impeachment, penalties right. from uh, reprimand, censorship, fines, small fines, or fines up to $10,000. Or Removal from office. Right. Removal from office. Right. So that's the work of the commission. Now, I took the liberty to print off, before coming here, 37 pages. 37 pages. The whole guide. The whole guide. Mm -hmm. The Florida Commission on Ethics. And it spells out what the state of Florida expects mm -hmm. of public officials. Mm -hmm. And what this guide says, we as citizens should be able to expect transparency, mm -hmm. yes. honesty, yeah. and um, impartiality. Transparency, honesty, impartiality. So talking about Copley mm -hmm. and all the perceived conflicts, do we feel like he was honest with us? Mm -hmm. Do we feel like he was transparent with us? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Did we feel as though he offered integrity to the process? Right. My dad is involved in the process by representing a very important component of the deal. My uncle is the main architect <laughs> of the deal. And I'm going to get to vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that that's that's a problem with me. Right. So just like you have that information and Russ if I looked it up information, the city council members should know this. And um and the fact that, like, as you said, that they probably, you didn't say it, but it, it assumes like it was overlooked, the possibility of a conflict of interest was um, overlooked to get that person's vote, then the whole city council should be held accountable as well. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> there are some members on city council, mainly mm -hmm. in that group of Three mm -hmm. that voted against the deal. Well, excluding them. And that member uh, or that group of members, mm -hmm. I feel very strongly that uh, they understand conflicts of interest. Right. And I'm going to tell you right. why. I was at breakfast yesterday morning, and um, a very key figure in our community was in the restaurant. And he and I stood and talked. And this very key figure in our community told me that he and another individual, very key figure in our community, mm -hmm. were at a race game in a suite. And the two of them happened to look down into another suite and saw city council members in that suite eating steak and lobster. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and mm. that individual asked me, Mr. Tabba, did you know they were serving steak and lobster at the Tropicana field ball games? I told him, no, I didn't know that. 
you know, well, it was probably catered in mm -hmm. special event. City council members. It was suggested that that could have been a low payoff mm -hmm. for their support. Yeah. Um, they definitely don't deserve that. That was a suggestion. After this deal. So, again, conflicts of interest. Some people just, well, they know the issue, <laughs> but they seem to want to ignore the issue. Well, you see, sometimes I don't think they want to really ignore it, Ray. I, I, I think is, let me go back, and you said this. When you look at a conflict of interest and you say how the state define it, it's cut and dry. It's common right. sense. Yeah. It's cut and dry. Now, it is up to these people to define their own conflict of interest, how they look at it, how do they define it. And I look at it this way, right? Whoever's in power, whoever controls the, the, the power, they are the one actually define the state of, state of conflict. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you look at it. Mm -hmm. See, so my concern is, you are right, the state has define your rate, mm -hmm. Jamie. Mm -hmm. Very, very common. Mm -hmm. But how do they define it? That's what bothers me. And, and that's a good point. The people in power define it yeah. as it relates yeah. to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. How do they define right. it? How it relates to them. Sure. They define it. Yes. Because so, uh, if they feel as though they want to adhere to it, they yeah. adhere to it. That's right. If they don't care to adhere to it, they ignore it. And it shouldn't be flexible. It shouldn't be. It should be what it is. It, it shouldn't be flexible. And that's why they can bend it and wrap it and twist it yes. to make it whatever they want. Yeah. So why even yes. have it if you can do that? That's right. Why even have it? Why even have these? <laughs> I'm like, Jamie, what do I have guidelines? Mm -hmm. You know, this is uh, straight from the commission's guide and uh, anti-nepotism laws. Mm -hmm. Straight from the commission's guide, mm -hmm. a public official is prohibited from seeking for a relative mm -hmm. any appointment, employment, promotion, or advancement in the agency in which he is, or she is serving <laughs> or over which the official exercises jurisdictional yes. control. Mm -hmm. Now, Copley was not, well, Rob, that is, he was not seeking any appointment. He already had his appointment. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to see his uncle succeed mm -hmm. in that major development, major development and all of that's admirable. I respect that. Mm -hmm. But if you want your uncle to succeed, applaud him from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Don't sit up there and <laughs> vote on that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, don't sit up there and vote on that. Yeah. Um, going on here, <clears throat> once again, elected officials are obligated not requested, obligated, obligated to serve with integrity uh, and all impartiality. Of them. Mm -hmm. It's the law. Mm -hmm. It's the law. And as I indicated earlier, there are penalties, largely civil penalties, that guilty parties face per the Florida Commission on Ethics. And there might be someone listening to this podcast thinking of some things that may not have been in their minds before. They may be angry at some of the things we've said. Mm, that'll be all right. But these are all facts. Yeah, that'll be these all right. are all facts. And if they want to proceed with filing a complaint with the Florida Commission on Ethics, they all have a right to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's at that point that the Commission on Ethics will take the complaint, review the complaint, decide whether they want to act on the complaint. Truly. If they act on the complaint, they hold a hearing. 
if they feel as though that official violated the code of ethics, they have a series of penalties that right. they can employ. Now, I want to say this about Rob Gertis, the chief architect on the stadium deal. Mm. Everybody I've spoken to says that um, he's a stand-up guy. Rob Gertis is a good man. I'm talking everybody, real quality man. One person even suggested that Rob Gertis should be mayor of St. Pete, hmm. or he should run for mayor. Actually, the person called me and asked me, Ray, what you think about Rob Gertis running for mayor? Say, I really don't know Rob Gertis. I really don't know him. But based on what you're saying, and based on what other people have said to me, I wouldn't have a problem with it. As a matter of fact, I said, I wouldn't have a problem with Mickey Mouse running for mayor of St. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. I've said that many times. Um, it's... Um... You, you, you know what, Ray? I, I, I think when you look at everything that goes down, I go back to your, your writing here. There are three things that people really got to look at. When you deliver something, when you bring something and you pass it, did you do it honestly? Was it trustworthy? Or was it transparent? If it's not in those three, you got a problem. You're right, Russ. You got a problem. Well, You're we, right. Well, we all know transparency has been an issue. You got a problem. Right. You got a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So it started with the transparency because yeah. that was an issue from the beginning of all of this, especially with the deal. You know, I haven't studied Copley Gertis's record on city council. I really haven't. Other than this issue with the Ray Stadium plan, if this issue wasn't such a major issue, if this issue did not have uh, the impact on our city's future yes, as it does, yes, yes, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. Right, right. You're right. Because I don't really know his track record. And if he had done what I feel to be the right thing, recuse and that himself. was to recuse himself, himself. from yeah. voting, right. if he had not voted on this issue, we wouldn't be talking about it. We wouldn't be talking about it. We wouldn't be talking about it. Now, remember what I said about Rob Gertis. People mm -hmm. have said to me, he's a stand-up quality guy. I remember being at an event, and he came over to me. I had never met him, Rob. And he introduced himself to me. I thought that was a very gentleman thing to do. I respected him for the way he handled that introduction, Rob Gertis. Yeah. And uh, remember, I said one person said he should be mayor. Ray, you think he'll run for mayor? I said, no way. You know, he's beholden to Ken Welch at this point. Mm -hmm. Ken gave him a promotion, a big promotion. Yeah. And uh, no, he wouldn't run against Ken yeah. Welch. But here's an article. I alluded to it earlier. I alluded to it. And this article was written by Colleen. Serving St. Petersburg is a Gertis family affair. Serving St. Petersburg is a Gertis family affair. A lot of quality things here. That's why I said it's admirable, mm -hmm. the family traits. Mm -hmm. All of that, good. He just should have recused himself from voting on a plan that his uncle slash brother uh, presented to city council on behalf of right. the city. And, 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 he should... and his dad representing the museum. Yeah. Fellas, you know what, you know, Ray, before time, you close, Ray, okay, go ahead. I, I want people to understand what you're saying. This is our opinion. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what we're saying. That's why we have this. Uh, this is why we have this. Our show. opinion. We're not lawyers. No, mm -hmm. no. We can read. <laughs> we can read. And we can offer opinions. And we have common sense. And we have common sense. <laughs> Good, this so is... With that being said, gentlemen, I'm going to have to close it out. Thank you to my two dynamic co hosts for a job well done, as always. And we want to thank our listeners for tuning in to the Ray Temple Podcast on 99.1 FM, The Bird. And ask that you do so each and every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. And you can also go to YouTube, type in the Ray Tampa Podcast, and you can see them all. And with all that being said, good evening.